carried across. All right, welcome to Nashville Art Makers. My name is Ronnie Chris, and with me today is an extremely talented person in many levels, but in particular, the great musician, artist, producer, whatever else we can figure out about you, Brian. <laughs> this is Brian Clark. Say hi. Hey, everyone. All right. Um, Brian, really glad to have you here. Um, we got some good news to share with everybody. Obviously, you have a brand new record out. Yes. Um, it's called uh, Southern Intermissions, and it's uh, Brian Clark and the new Lyceum Players. Looks like this. You'll be able to see this actually on the blog, too. Um, you know, right out of the gate, man, just tell me a little bit about this record. Like, what's going on with this record? Well, I mean, the 10-second elevator pitch is if Elvis Costello made a record with the Allman Brothers. Awesome, okay. So that's sort of the nuts and bolts of it. Okay. Um, it's a retro-sounding record. We were really interested in trying to do things the old-fashioned way, so um, when I recorded it here in the studio, um, I only used ribbon mics, we used vintage gear, we tracked live as a band and um, kept everything very minimal. Well, on the guitars, only sure. one microphone, one guitar, one amp. So we didn't layer in things like you would normally do in a normal sort of rock sure. production. So we went really back to old school, like the types of records that were made at Sun and Stax okay. and, uh, and Motown. A lot like... It reminds me, uh, and we had a conversation about this once, but it's sort of similar to the way Marty Stewart's been doing a lot of his records lately, or yeah. in particular the one from... Yeah, Studio B. Studio B. Ghost Train. Great record. That's an awesome record. Um, and this is a great record, too. Um, Southern Intermission. Uh, the One of the things that you notice right out of the gate is, um, and obviously you throw it in the title, is there is a, this thread of Southern culture mm. in the record. Can you explain a little bit about that and like what, you're, what you were going after in terms of... Um, you know, hitting that up. We have songs uh, like my one of my favorite titles of all time, Alabama, Macedonia, Blackwater, Church of Christ. Yeah, the longest. That's that's great. <laughs> um, Southern Amen, uh, just things like that. So, you know, give us some uh, touches on that. Well, uh, I think the mission of this album is to sort of prove that Southern culture isn't an oxymoron. Okay. So it's really just showing that there's a lot to Southern culture that's worthwhile to preserve. And it's also reminiscent of where we are as Southerners in general, where I think we scrutinize ourselves a little more because of our past, mm -hmm. uh, that we, we're in a, a very active state of redefining ourselves. Maybe more so than the, the heavy populations that are on the coasts. Sure. But as you work your way inward into the country, I think that... Um, that idea of who you are and where you came from and still you know, embracing um, everything that's going on that's current but not giving up your past and the traditions of your past and keeping, sure. keeping what's worthwhile and nurturing those. So that's what this record is really dedicated towards, that mentality. Uh, there's a one song in here in particular I wanted you to talk about because okay. it's... Uh, it's <laughs> <laughs> he already knows what song I'm going to say. Uh, Transistor to Love. Oh, yeah. Any... I'm tempted to actually put the lyrics to Transistor Love on the blog just so people can really see. Go for it. Uh, I think can. we're going to. Um, but tell us a little bit about what made you write that song. Okay. Um, it's a throwback song, much like the early uh, Ten Pan Alley songs like Cole Porter okay. and Rodgers and Hammerstein and um, <clears throat> Kurt Vile and some of the others. It has that old school flavor to it. It's a swing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the idea was, I was going to write another love song, like we always do. You write a love song, and you go, how can I make mine different? Yeah. You know? <clears throat> and, uh, and so I figured, well, maybe one of the best ways to do that was to just use some technology. So at the time, I was looking at a lot of old ham radio gear, you know, um, <clears throat> shortwave. And uh, I, I basically started to study up on ham radio terms, which there are thousands of these terms that okay. unless you're in this, you have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And so I figured, well, what would happen if uh, a radio antenna fell in love with a receiver and vice versa? Like, could they have a love relationship? <laughs> so that's where I really tried to do it. And I used all ham radio terms. And as far as I know, they're all accurate. Like what you get, you know, they're all, they're all in the right place. They all make logical sense 
it to a yeah. ham radio guys, and I've had several that have called me like in the past week, you know, two weeks or so. Yeah. And they're like, "Man, I'm a big ham radio guy, and this actually, you you actually did your homework." And I'm like, <laughs> Sweet, you know. You're like awesome. <laughs> That's yeah, exactly I, what you wanted. Because I wouldn't know the first thing about like t- you know. I was, yeah, yeah. I, I'd be like, forget it. That's great. Um, I love the fact that you you have this ability to, um, you know, take s- such a lack of a better word, like an odd direction in, in terms of what people would ever think of to write a song, mm-hmm. but make it, because you're so musical, you can actually fit it in, and, and, and it just really works. Um, the other thing that's really important that I think people need to know about this record is not only did you write it, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, obviously you're performing it with your band, mm-hmm. but you produced this record. I mean, you 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 pretty much did everything for this record. Yeah. What uh, You as a producer, like, what is it that you enjoy about producing, and what is it about you as a producer that you were trying to sort of get across or achieve? Well, I love the whole creative process, not just from the writer's side, you know, from being a songwriter and, and doing those things, but I also love being able to frame it. And as a producer, I think that you let the artist be the painting on the canvas, and what you do as the producer is find that beautiful frame that really matches uh-huh. how you perceive the painting. And so... That's my job, and you got to kind of wear two hats. But I did a lot of pre-production work. Uh-huh. Um, my style of producing is much more old school. Uh, like when I rec- when I track, I don't track with EQ on any instrument. So if I don't get the sound I want, I switch the mic, or I switch the placement, or you know the performer, or the gear, or something. Yeah, but yeah. I don't go to an EQ and go, "There's how it needs to sound." Um, and most people reach for that, and and I'm just not that way. Probably because I'm not a good enough engineer. <laughs> yeah, okay. but uh, honest. But uh, but I just don't feel comfortable doing that. I just like to get things as natural as possible and keep things as true to what was coming out. Yeah, almost almost a classical mentality. You know, sure. if you record a chamber group, you don't, you don't hype it. it out with EQ and yeah, it's just you. Record, you find the right room and the right. That's right, team. and you re- and you record it from there, and that's how you work it. And so that's really what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> There's the dog. <laughs> so yeah, you've you've now reached Piper, the studio dog. Yeah. Our our Australian you, Shepherd is. You belong in this video, Piper. Yeah. I I definitely agree with you. I mean, I know your work uh, really well, and and I I always can sort of hear that and get the sense of that from listening to your recordings, things that you've produced. Uh, just uh, this is always kind of a fun question, and and things is. As a producer, though, a lot of times people don't get to ask people this question because they're usually dealing with just artists and things of this mm-hmm. nature. As a producer, who are some producers that have influenced you pretty heavily that you really sort of get inspiration from? Um, wow, there's so many. I mean, I, I really like uh, the early Beatles productions, so everything with that whole wonderful team of, of Ken Scott and uh, Jeff Emmerich and... Um, George Martin. Yeah. Um, I think that's great. I like the early Phil Spector work uh, back in the Wall of Sound days. Um, I, I love that. Um, certainly the Motown. Uh, yeah. I love the Tom Dowd recordings that he did at Muscle Shoals. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that those are probably the ones that I are the most, I'm the most interested in. Uh, there's just, t- I mean, there's so many, you know, um, Eddie Kramer's work with with Hendrix is another great one. Mm-hmm. Um, God, man, I'm, there's I'm, definitely I'm, a sense that like there's a golden age that um, mm-hmm. sits really well with you, um, which makes a lot of sense because a lot of you know great strides were made at that time. A lot of things that were very natural, yeah. but like yeah. were unique, you know, and gave us sounds that now you know they're forever part of our lives. You know, mm-hmm. um, I think there's a couple of guys that are doing it now. You know. Uh, Buddy Miller has enjoyed that. Um, I think um, uh, T Bone Burnett. Yeah, he's is, he's pretty on the money. He's it it always to... that you know sort of an old school guy. I love uh, Jakiri King. Okay. Um, who did you know most of the Kings of Leon? Yeah. Records and did the Nord Jones uh, album with the Chasing Pirates as a single. Um, I really like his production value too. It's. It's very much new, but it has that old vibe, and I, I think it's just the process of how you actually record it. That's what's so interesting to me. Yeah. And I love those guys, but I like the big over-the-top producers as well. You know, Quincy Jones and, mm-hmm. you know, everything else. Um, to so each his sort of own, his own flavor. Yeah, you know, the genre there's, dictates there's, it. Genre definitely does. I mean, obviously you don't, 
you know, you don't take, I mean, I guess you might want to, maybe for fun, but T-Bone Burnett doesn't do Nicki Minaj, you know, like. Oh, God. <laughs> that would That'd probably be a good thing for her. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, la- lastly, last thing here uh, I really want to touch on, because I think it's really important to talk about, because it's another big facet of your life and who, what you are and what you're doing. Uh, this is also released on a brand new record label called Rain Feather Records, which you happen to be the CEO, starter, everything, brainchild, it's all yours. So um, yeah. maybe tell our listener or viewers <laughs> right. um, about Rain Feather Records. Like, what, what is unique about Rain Feather Records? Well, Rain Feather is just sort of a, a very small label. Um, there's only three artists on it, and my band is one of them. Um, it's not genre specific, but the thing that I wanted to do was to try to make the world a better place through the power of music. So when I did the mission statement for the record company, that was the thing that I was most concerned about. So every act that we sign as as Rainfeather, it has to lead you to a more centered lifestyle, preferably something spiritual, uh-huh. whatever that is. You know, there's no faith uh, requirement in the sense of whether you're Christian or Buddhist or you know if you're yeah. if you're Jewish or whatever. I mean, it doesn't matter. But the idea is that people that practice some type of spiritual based existence, sure. I think, are better people, and it's just a, and not in the sense of, of value, but they're better in in the sense of their quality of lives that they lead. They lead a sure. better quality of life, and so this music is really geared towards trying to help people find that. So we don't do alcohol, tobacco, and firearms for sponsors. So we don't do Bud Light presents. We I want Gatorade or I want Whole Foods. I want sure. Chick Fil A. I want something that's that's more wholesome. Yeah. Um, not because I think there's anything wrong with people drinking Bud Light. Um, it's just we get a lot of that. There's a, there's plenty of that. Yeah. So it's just more of a balance. Yeah. And maybe it's because like I was born in the '70s and I'm a Libra and I just need to balance things. <laughs> <laughs> you better you know, balance it. You better balance it, man. You know. But, but what's your where's my mood ring? But you know, <laughs> I, I just I really am into that. I was just like, yeah, just equal. Give us a balance on it. You know, give people a better choice. Because I think if you, if you let people know that there's a better choice out there mm-hmm. in the sense that they have a broader sense and something that could be more rewarding, um, they'll choose awesome. it. Awesome. Well, Brian, thank you so much for sitting down with us. Yeah. Um, everybody who watches our um, videos here are going to get a chance to check it out. And also, uh, hopefully, we'll be able to get the, that video up there. Um, yeah, and one thing um, that might be kind of cool, I don't know if, if the viewers are interested in it, but there's a documentary that I made on the making of the record, and you can okay. if you go to the Rainfeather website, you can actually watch all three parts. And that's Rainfeathers doc, uh, rainfeatherrecords.com? Yeah, okay. and um, you know it's, it's out there, but if you really want to get behind the scenes and see the band and see us performing it and how we mixed it and the gear that we used and the yeah. guitars, I mean, it's a real geek fest, but it's... There's also this really like cool little in, insert here that has some of the, uh, you know, That's the making of shots. Yeah. So anyway, so I'll throw it out there. Well, thanks again for sitting down, and uh, it's a pleasure as always. Uh, I know you more than just as a musician, but it's uh, always a pleasure to see the work that you do, and I'm very proud to be able to bring it to the, my audience, and we'll just watch where it goes from here, man. We'll be rooting for your record. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. You got it. All, All right. right. We'll see you. <laughs> On the highway of uh, musical production, you're the little smart car, right? We're the smart car. We're the Volts. <laughs> you're not the semi. We're the Prius. We're the Prius of the musical world. <laughs> I right. keep wanting to get a V8 in there, but I, you know. Yeah, it just doesn't fit in the trunk. It's right. It's like, come on, man. I, I, I hope if the label gets big enough, we'll be like the Suburban. Yeah. But it'll be electric vehicle. Electric. <laughs> a V12. Or at least biodiesel, maybe. It's something. <laughs> but it'll still be honking big, man. Yeah. We can take the family out of it.